in our first season, we were mostly focusing on some of the core themes in the broader study of environmental politics more broadly. And, you know, there was a little bit of a Canadian bent to it because, you know, most of our guests had some kind of Canadian connection and we did cover a lot of domestic content. But in this season, we are going global. Hello, welcome to the Ecopolitics Podcast, Season 2, Global Ecopolitics. This is a podcast for university students tackling some of the big questions in the field of global environmental politics. I'm Peter Andre from Carleton University, co-host of the show, along with Dr. Ryan katz from the University of Ottawa, who's joining me for this introductory episode. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm doing really well, Peter. Thank you so much uh, for asking. I hope you're doing well too. And I'm I'm very excited to be here for the second season because it speaks to how well the first season went. Um, and so, yes, for those who are listening, there is a whole other season, 16 episodes, in fact. And if you haven't already heard those episodes, you really should check them out. And the best place to do that is at our website, which is ecopoliticspodcast, all one word, .ca, ecopoliticspodcast.ca. And you can also hear the episodes on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts uh, or any uh, podcast player of your choice. Um, but we do recommend the website to our listeners because it has some additional features like uh, bios and headshots of our guests that we interview. And uh, we're also providing transcripts of the show on there. Um, and that includes uh, video versions of the podcast with closed captioning available. And that that lets uh, viewers, you know, see the captions live in real time while they're listening to the episode. And we also have some artwork on the website. Um, if you have been following on your podcast player of choice, you may not be aware that our website features thought-provoking art uh, prepared for each episode by our digital artist, Adam Gibbard. And he's done an, an amazing job of, you know, putting together these collages, uh, stitching together these uh, archival images that he's found, recoloring them and putting together these uh, really innovative art pieces that speak to the themes that we're discussing in each episode. So I highly recommend people check that out. So in this season, uh, we're focusing on global ecopolitics. So I'm going to ask you if you can share the main ways that this season differs from the first season. Sure, Ryan. Um, you know, of course, politics, environmental politics is inherently transboundary. It's it's a little bit artificial to put it into the box of nation states. Uh, so many issues that we're dealing with from climate change to biodiversity loss to uh, persistent organic pollutants are transboundary issues and uh, states have to figure out how to work together to address many of these issues. Uh, so when when I think about global ecopolitics, I'm thinking about it in, in two different ways. Uh, first, we're, we're going to bring stories from around the world to our listeners, um, stories that are taking place in other countries um, that might have quite different contexts and issues than what we're dealing with in Canada. Uh, the, the one that comes to mind is uh, the case of elephant conservation and policies that support this in Botswana, which is one of our upcoming episodes. And we're going to look at them and figure out how people are, what how the politics of those issues are playing out in those countries, how and how they engage with other actors globally as they try and address those issues. Then, besides these stories from around the world, we're also going to have a lot of stories that are truly about the global scope of environmental issues. And, and many of them are going to focus on uh, the politics of negotiating international or what's often called multilateral uh, environmental policies, like, say, the, the Paris Climate Accord or international conventions on protecting forests. Um, some of the themes that uh, we brought forward in season one, I think, are, uh, are, are unique to Canada and yet in some cases, we'll also be continuing some of those. And, and uh, the example I'm thinking of is we had several stories that dealt with uh, the, the place of Indigenous people in relation to environmental politics. When I te speak to colleagues in Europe, for example, uh, I realize how blessed we are in Canada and in the Americas uh, to have as colleagues and as people that we can connect with Indigenous people who have been on this land and have very different understandings of what it means to live on the lands that we're all together occupying these days. And it brings a particular flavor, I think, to 
uh, environmental politics uh, in this country, how it's conceptualized and how we work on addressing them than, say, in the European context. Um, those dynamics are also there on the international stage where uh, when we think about the world community of states, there's so many different perspectives on what is the nature of an environmental issue and how should you go about addressing it. Um, so many unique circumstances where there's particular peoples, often indigenous peoples or others who are marginalized within states and and often bearing the brunt of environmental injustices. That was a theme that was there in season one and I think will continue in a global context uh, in season two. Uh, specifically when it comes to questions of indigenous people and indigenous rights in the environment, uh, we're going to be speaking um, to a couple of guests uh, who are Maya, uh, indigenous people from Belize in South America, uh, about their struggles around uh, maintaining land rights in the context of colonialism. Um, we're also going to have uh, indigenous uh, speakers from the United States that we'll be talking to about their perspectives on global ecopolitics. The other big theme that I would mention in uh, that I find fascinating, and that I think it's really important for students to engage in in this uh, realm of global ecopolitics, is north. What we can broadly call north-south relations, um, and I say very broadly because those categories, just like uh, uh, developed and underdeveloped, or least developed, less developed, um, are all a bit problematic. Um, developed against whose scale? Who decides what developed is? Uh, they're also problematic because within um, the quote unquote developing countries, you've got massive differences between countries that are highly industrialized. Uh, I think of a, a country like China, um, or Korea. Um, and then you have countries uh, like, like Botswana, some of the African states, some smaller South American states that uh, really have quite uh, low per capita income. And uh, so depending on which measures you take, there's different ways of classifying different countries in the world and, and how they compare to one another. And, and those different positionalities uh, all relate to very different perspectives on the environment. The final theme that I guess I, I touched on at the beginning and that I'm looking forward to speaking with some of our guests about is this idea of multilateralism. Um, I, I, it, it's maybe stating the obvious, but we don't have a world government, right? Uh, there is no global democracy. Uh, the best that we have, for better or worse, is the United Nations system, which is really a creature of the world states. It's the world's countries uh, and their governments saying, let's work together on some issues um, by, uh, you know, almost in a federalist approach, the same that way that say that the Federation of Canada works across its provinces. And um, that uh, technically allows all of those states to have uh, an equal voice in decisions made by the UN on, on various matters, including environment. Um, though in practice, the, the, the countries with more political or economic clout in one way or another tend to have greater say. And so there's a whole you know, political dynamics around how to achieve global consensus on addressing issues, whether it's climate change or ozone depletion or any of the other issues. Um, and there's, you know, there's, there's fascinating stories to be told there, uh, because on the one hand, in those international negotiations, you often have a, uh, a lowest common denominator outcome. Uh, you know, what can everybody just agree to? Um, and yet you also see international negotiations that manage to raise the bar globally and push the community of states to achieve results that they maybe didn't think they could achieve. And there are examples of those kinds of international agreements. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking about the uh, the Montreal Protocol on ozone depleting substances from the early 1990s that uh, actually tried to address a global environmental issue and to all accounts has been reasonably successful at doing that. Um, so those we've got several shows with, with guests that are going to help us kind of unpack that question of multilateralism and what it means for, uh, for ecopolitics. There you go, Ryan. I, I guess I had a lot on my mind today thinking about season two. Um, I'd love to hear some of the themes that uh, you're looking forward to unpacking over this coming season. 
Yeah, well, you did such a fantastic job of of uh, contextualizing all of the themes that we'll be looking at. So I don't have that much more to add to the discussion, but I will mention two things that I'm looking forward to about this uh, season as a whole. Um, you know, I had mentioned earlier that our our last season did have a little bit of a Canadian uh, flavor to it. And one of the things I am looking forward to in this season as we sort of scale up to the global is the the subtle ways that that tends to change the nature of the discussion in the classroom in particular, where uh, you and I will be using these, uh, these, these podcasts and discussing them with students. And one thing I've noticed, I don't know if you find this as well, Peter, but um, when we talk about global environmental politics, that, that the students kind of arrive at their informed opinions a, a little bit more organically and, um, you know, you had spoken uh, during your comments about how how just different the world is, the diversity of approaches and the diversity of, of forms of politics that exist around the world. And I think that has the effect of kind of opening up the discussion when we're talking about global environmental politics uh, as compared to domestic politics. I don't know if you you see that, but um, the, the other thing, Peter, that I'm uh, quite excited about, um, or maybe the theme that I'm, I'm most excited about, and I had mentioned this in the last season as well, because we did talk about it in a, in a domestic context, but we're going global this year, this, uh, <laughs> this series. And so the discussion about the growth environment debate, I had mentioned I'm, I'm doing a research project on this, a multi-year research project looking at discourses of the growth environment debate. Uh, so we know we have um, some differing opinions out there uh, within the environmental studies community, within the environmental politics uh, scholarship, quite frankly, about what the real relationship is. What is the true relationship between economic growth and the environment? And that has pretty stark implications for policy. You know, we have uh, numerous states and certainly uh, corporate interests that are seeking ways to achieve what they call green growth. And we also have a, a, a body of uh, scholarship, a growing body of, of scholarship that's very critical of that idea uh, that self-describes itself as a, a degrowth perspective. And, you know, we, we will also talk about um, the emerging <laughs> idea of a growth, right? A, a position that's a little bit more agnostic on this question of what uh, growth and what the relationship is between these nodes. So, Peter, I'm obviously uh, very excited about this second season and just wanted to let people know, let listeners know that we have a really fantastic lineup of speakers. You know, we will be talking about uh, a number of really important themes in the study of global environmental politics. So we are having an episode that is um, specifically looking at theory and method in the study of global ecopolitics. We'll be talking about uh, global environmental agreements and uh, multilateral agreements, as you pointed out. You also mentioned indigenous environmental rights uh, from a sort of a global and transnational perspective. Um, and along those lines, we're going to be speaking to someone about uh, environmental social movements and these questions of um, environmental justice. Uh, we have an episode on ecological imperialism and uh, north-south relations we're also, I don't think you mentioned this, Peter, but we're going to talk to an expert on urban sustainability and some of the networks that uh, we're seeing emerging between these quote unquote global cities and efforts to collaborate between uh, large you know, metropolises around the world on uh, sustainable initiatives. And then uh, there's going to be a discussion about net zero agriculture and uh, what that means in different contexts and, and, of course, lots more. So, Peter, I think I'm going to wrap this up unless you have any uh, final things to, to add to the discussion. I'm just really uh, looking forward to the conversations that we're going to have, Ryan. I, I have to say that while this uh, podcast series has been... Uh, you know, to, to all accounts, what we're hearing from the students is they're really appreciating the diversity of voices. But I got to tell you, as one of the people who gets to do these conversations along with you, um, I'm really appreciating the conversations that we're having with people and really looking forward to having that expand well beyond Canada's borders to all parts of the world and, and you know, put our ear out there and see what uh, see the amazing stuff that's going on. Because while with environmental politics, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of challenging things going on. We're at a, a bit of a critical time, crisis, emergency is the kind of language that people are using these days. 
Um, but I also feel like we're at a time of great hope where there's so many, uh, so many people in so many sectors working together to start tackling these issues. And uh, it's truly exciting to talk to the kinds of guests that we have on this show and, and learn firsthand about what uh, some of those efforts are. Well, I share that uh, excitement. Uh, so that makes two of us. And I'm, I'm uh, you know, I want to thank you, Peter, for collaborating on this project. And also, we should probably thank our funding partners. Um, this podcast is not free to put together. And the University of Ottawa and Carleton University are the institutions that uh, made it all come together. And uh, so we want to thank them for providing the the funds that uh, allowed the Global Ecopolitics podcast to come together. And of course, we have to, to thank our uh, listeners out there, not just our students, but we're, we have a growing following of, of listeners who are, are uh, following along and listening as the episodes come out. So thank you so much. You can also follow us along on, uh, on social media. We're on Twitter at EcopoliticsP. Uh, that's our handle. So Ecopolitics, capital P. And, uh, you know, do get us de- get in touch. Uh, let us know what you think. And uh, let's continue the discussion. So finally, I want to say a big thank you to our producer, uh, Nicole Bedford, and to uh, Kika Mueller for uh, preparing the transcripts and captioning. And also to Adam Ashby Gibbard for all um, the digital work that he's been doing and his support with the artwork. So that's it, Peter. Uh, we'll chat next time. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.